what's up everybody Craig here and today I'm doing a quick video just to tell you a little bit about my storage solutions in my house what this system's running I have another system that runs my media server and the software that I use to manage them so at my house I have two kind of solutions going on here I have Windows and I have Linux my Linux machine is just a machine that I built uh, basically with some older parts that I had a GTX 1080 I got a i5 9600k it's not as powerful as the one behind me but when it comes to the Plex media server which is what I have running on it right now it rips through transcodes um, when I have my Plex media server on this machine behind me um, it had issues people were watching movies or TV shows and it would stutter I think Windows just has a difficult time when it comes to services and resource allocation that stuff like that is just tough now when it comes to gaming this thing is pretty awesome uh, but when it came to media server uh, it wasn't to doing too good and also uh, the fact that this is a uh, water-cooled machine I don't want my pump running 24 hours so um, that's why I built my Linux server and that runs in RAID 0 um, so software RAID for my Linux machine runs in RAID 0 uh, but this machine that I have in back of me right here runs stable bit dry pool which is pretty cool and that's what we're going to talk about today you notice that there's a pool in the name so it is dry pool and Windows does have a built-in uh, pool utility dry pool utility called Windows storage spaces but I've used that before and I didn't really care for it too much it's run into a lot of issues errors um, but since I've used stable bit dry pool which has been about a year now um, it's been awesome it's very lightweight fast snappy and very easy to use a lot of just very simple settings to set um, you're gonna see a lot of similarities between RAID 0 and RAID 1 and what stable bit dry pool has to offer I uh, tried to look up a little bit about uh, whether it does parity or not because there's obviously some redundancy in there when you choose options but uh, really for what I use which I'm gonna get into uh, the storage solutions I have in my house but I'm a RAID 0 RAID 1 guy uh, but since I've switched to SSDs from uh, regular spinning hard drives I've been using RAID 0 a lot and I have a way of backing that up but that's for another video but let's go ahead and get into it so anyone that knows anything about storage solutions or data storage knows that hard drives are kind of the outgoing technology they're slow right so I've made the switch to SSDs or M.2s or uh, NVMEs so much faster but if anybody knows anything about flash storage it's expensive anything over two terabytes is very expensive right I'd say under two terabytes is pretty affordable so when it comes to software like stable bit drive pool you can add as you go so if you make that purchase of a you know 500 gig a one terabyte a two terabyte drive and you know it's affordable for you right well you get it you wait till it fills up and then you go ahead and make another purchase I don't know months later year later whatever however long it takes you to fill up that drive but you don't have to make this massive purchase of either a you know four eight terabyte solid state drive or multiple two terabyte drives or one terabyte drive whatever it is you can just add as you go another cool thing about stable bit drive pool is that I have my C drive right that's actually my M.2 so I have my C drive and that's going to be my Windows you know programs and all that stuff user files and then when I have I have three solid state drives in there so that would be pretty annoying if I got one you know drive holding my Windows stuff the C drive and then I got three different drives so you'd have four drives popped up when you look at you know my computer right that would be pretty annoying actually no I have one C drive and this is the way I prefer you could actually make it all just one drive if you pull them all together but that's not how I like to roll I like to roll with my C drive that's gonna be my Windows machine and then the three drives that I have added I think I got one two terabyte and then two one terabytes uh, solid state drive I make them just appear as one drive so when I open my computer it's simply just the C drive and then my drive pool okay so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit about how I set up my pool as you can see I got my C drive my one terabyte crucial SSD and my two terabyte crucial SSD none of these are pooled they're all in the non pooled little area so watch what I do I simply click add and then all of a sudden it brings up one drive pool and the letter is F so we have one terabyte crucial SSD in the drive pool right now and that's all we have so let's see what else we could do I'm gonna go ahead and add my two terabyte SSD into my drive pool and boom within seconds we have three terabytes of storage in my drive pool or 2.69 terabytes to be exact but if you can see that's kind of annoying looking isn't it we got a D and E and an F drive now this is up to you preferably I do not like all those drives appearing I just like my C drive and then my drive pool and then 
RAM disk is something that I use for Adobe Cache and stuff like that. That's actually my RAM right there. I made a disk uh, from my RAM. I have 64 gigs of RAM and I use a little piece of it for uh, cache for my Adobe. That's for another video because that's uh, volatile memory. It needs a little bit of describing. So I'm gonna go down there to my search box. I'm gonna type in disk management. Now I'm actually going to delete the drive letters. Don't worry, this won't do anything to your drive pool, but just make sure you're deleting the letter from the drive pool. You can always reassign them later if you delete the wrong one, but for this purpose, I'm deleting just the letters associated with the drive pool so I can get it to one letter. As you see, we just have drive pool drive F and then one terabyte crucial SSD still with the letter E attached to it. Let's go ahead and take care of that too. So as you can see, now I'm down to just my drive pool, which is drive F and my C drive, which is my C drive. Um, again, the RAM disk we're not gonna discuss, uh, but this is the way I like to look at my drive pool. Now I was talking to you before about RAID 0 and RAID 1 options within StableBit Drive Pool. You just click on Manage Pool, and then you'll see multiple options. And you can select whatever benefits your situation. So if you want redundancy, if you want uh, to not be able to worry about backing up your disk and you want your data to be balanced across all your disks and that way if one fails, you'll be able to recover, then by all means, select the right options that's for you. I choose a RAID 0 kind of a setup, so I do a manual backup. Well, there's actually a program that does it automatically, but um, that's what I do for performance and speed. All right, so now that I showed you a little bit about the drive pool, and as you can see, I have my one and my two terabyte drive pool together. Well, guess what? Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate this. Obviously, you can see there's um, a lot more space left, but uh, I picked up another drive. So what do I do when I get a new drive? Uh, let me go ahead and take you through it. So I picked up another crucial one terabyte SSD, and I'm going to go ahead and format it and then add it to the pool. I'm gonna go ahead and type in CMD. I'm gonna run it as administrator, so that's a command prompt. I'm gonna type in disk part. Disk part is just a command line utility that I use to clean a disk. Basically, it'll erase it and wipe it. And then I use disk management to format it into NTFS if I'm using Windows, which I am. Uh, and then I'll add it to my pool. I'm gonna type in list disk. We're gonna see all the disks that appear. Disk one is the one I'm after. So I'm gonna select disk one. And then I'm gonna type clean. And then exit to exit disk part. Now you're gonna see when we open disk management this time, it's going to ask us how we want to initialize a disk with master boot record or GUID partition table. I'm gonna choose GPT. It's gonna ask us to assign a letter. That's fine, we can delete it later. I'm gonna give it a name. And as you can see, it's appearing in this PC. And remember, we don't like that. We wanna add it to the pool and we wanna get rid of that drive letter. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and click add, add it to the pool. As you can see, within seconds, it's added to the pool. And now we have four terabytes of SSD storage. But let's go ahead and get rid of that nasty letter. I'm gonna open up disk management. Gonna right click, change drive letter and paths. I'm gonna remove the letter D. And now we have one drive, drive pool, letter F, and there's almost four terabytes of storage. Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do a test. Now I have a piece of footage, it's about nine gigabytes as you can see. It's actually from this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drag it on my desktop. So just so you know what we're working with here, um, I have a M.2 SSD. Uh, in my motherboard and it I think it's like 3,000 megabits per second um, read, read and write speeds um, but uh, the drive pool is straight up two and a half inch crucial SSDs and I think those are 500 or so uh, megabits per second read and write speed um, but just so you know what you're working with I just really what this test is just going to show is you don't lose any performance when using the drive pool especially when you're going SSD to SSD so look at those speeds right there, three gigabits per second. How quick did that nine gigabyte file get to my desktop? Pretty quick. And even putting that nine gigabyte file back to my drive pool, it was very fast, uh, kind of stabilized towards the end, about 500 megabits per second. But again, you're not losing any performance when you're using StableBit drive pool. 
Now, stable bit drive pull also gives you the opportunity to balance your drives as well. So, say you got you know a few full drives on there already, and you buy another two terabyte drive, and then you add it, right? It's going to be empty, right? Well, if you select the right options within stable bit drive pool, it will then balance the drive. So, think of it as a pool, right? It almost open the drains up on those three drives, have the data drain off them, and then fill up the next empty drive that you added until they're all level. And then it disperses data so that they're all kind of the same level. But I can't say this enough, Stable Bit Drive Pool has been the most amazing storage experience I've had when it comes to Windows. You add as you go, you know, if your data gets full, add another drive and it can just all be one drive. And that's just a fantastic solution. It's great for gamers. Uh, obviously, if you've seen with the latest AAA title games like Call of Duty or any of those, they just take up a lot of space. So your drives will fill up quickly. Um, especially if you like multiple games. Uh, content creators, uh, footage, 4K footage just eats up data like it's no tomorrow. So obviously being able to you know, have that footage on a drive and then your drive fills up and add more, add more as you go and you're increasing your storage and then you don't wanna lose that footage so you add some redundancy in there, uh, some file duplication so you don't lose it. Well, that's also a good solution too in DrivePool or StableBit DrivePool has you covered there. And then for media servers as well. So if you do run your media server off Windows, StableBit Drive Pool has you covered there too. So fill up your drives as you go, add as you go. Normally a ATX motherboard, uh, if you have an ATX motherboard, it'll probably have six SATA ports. So that's a lot of SSDs. So say you got six two terabyte drives, that's 12 terabytes of storage. That's a lot of storage. So you can do a lot with that. Um, if you wanna you know, keep your stuff safe, you know, you can add the redundancy in there and you, know, you don't lose your stuff. So that's my video for today. I hope you learned a little bit about StableBit Drive Pool. I hope you learned a little bit about my storage solutions in my house. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you loved it, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.